Hello, welcome to this video where we do another couple examples of U substitution. Uh, a little more difficult than the last two that we just did. Um, and so we start off with this example here asking us to find the area under the curve. The curve is 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared. And judging by the graph, we're interested in x equals 0 to x equals 1.5. We don't deal with decimals though. Let's deal with the improper version of that which is uh, 3 halves. We have to find the antiderivative here. Now normally there's an inside function and its derivative is the outside function but that doesn't happen here. What you should clue in on is when the degree of the inside is one more than the degree of the outside. That's usually how you would do the u sub. So we're not we're not ready for u sub but I do want you to notice though it does exactly you know look like a derivative, an antiderivative that you know. Um, if the 9 was a 1, then that'd be exactly the arc sine of x. And uh, actually on the one sheet where we had all the ones that we could do the shortcuts on, this actually was one of them. Let me show you how it works though so you can understand how that shortcut works. Um, if there is a shortcut, please use it though. Um, and so uh, I would like the 9 to be a 1. So I make it happen. I factor out the 9. Now, usually when you factor out, it's because both terms have that common term, but they don't. So the consequence is then that you need to put that into the other term, basically. Um, and so you do that by dividing. So if I take a 9 out, I'll be left with a 1, but it'll be minus x squared over 9. I am underneath the radical. So I'm going to break that radical up. It's a product. The product of the, um, the, the, the square root of the product is the product of the square roots. It doesn't work for plus. Please don't do that for plus. But for times and division, you can do it. So the square root of 9 is 3. And then we have the square root of 1 minus the x squared over 9. Doing great. We're just doing algebra right now. There's no calculus yet. We're getting to the calculus. We want to look like 1 over the square root of 1 minus something squared. Or something right now, which should be represented as a square, is x squared over 9. It is a perfect square. What is it the square of? It's the square of x over 3. So just rewrite it like that. Pull the one third all the way out. And now you are ready for u sub. Because if x over 3 is a u, you have exactly the arc sine of u as the antiderivative there. There's an inside function who is x over 3. And its derivative is 1 third, pretty much the outside function. Okay, all right, great. So let u be replaced by x over 3. The derivative will be replaced by 1 third dx. You know, uh, x over 3 is 1 third, of, don't do a quotient rule, it's just 1 third of x. So its derivative is 1 third times dx. And then uh, we have to replace dx, so we will, we could use the one-third in dx that's there. I don't know why I didn't do that. Anyway, 3du is the replacement to dx. And so what happens is the one-third from the outside and this 3 cancel each other out. And you're just looking exactly at 1 over the root of 1 minus u squared, which we know to be the integral of that, to be the arc sine of u. I want you to think of u sub as a sort of side work. You're trying to find this antiderivative and you can't. But through the technique of u sub, you're able to. And then, you know, keep that off to the side. Don't erase it. I need it. I need to see it. And then we're going to go back and put in what u was, x over 3. We don't need the plus c. We're ready to put a 3 halves in and put a 0 in. Fundamental theorem of calculus. 3 halves divided by 3. Those 3s cancel. It's the arc sine of a half. And the arc sine of zero is zero. When you're doing arc sine, you're trying to say, what angle do I plug in to sine in order to get this inside number here? What angle do you plug into sine in order to get a half? You can look at the unit circle to check that out. Well, it ends up being 60 degrees or pi over three. We need the radians version. Uh, pi over six, sorry. Pi over six. So that's it. Uh, pi over 6 is the answer minus nothing. So pi over 6 is the answer. That's the area. The area under that curve 
is exactly pi over 6. All right, great. I think we have time. Yeah, let's go ahead and do another example. Call this example 4. A little more ominous than the last one. 1 over root x, and that root x is times the root x plus 1 who is squared. Wow. What are you looking for? An inside function. With the goal in mind of hopefully that inside function's derivative is the outside function. Or some multiple of it. What is our, I mean, there's only one thing you can really call the inside function here. It is root x plus 1. That whole guy is squared. So yeah, that's going to be the inside function. What is the derivative of root x? If you need to, go ahead and represent it as x to the half and do the power rule. 1 half x to the negative 1 half. But I want you to be sort of uh, quicker with it and just know that root x's derivative is 1 over 2 root x. Okay. And look at what we have left for the rest of the integral after dealing with the root x plus 1 and calling it u. The rest of the integral is 1 over x dx. Oh, sorry, 1 over root x dx. And we're looking at exactly that, but maybe not exactly. There's a constant we have to worry about. Let's multiply both sides of this by 2. Um, doing that gives us uh, 2 du is 1 over root x dx. That's the replacement to 1 over root x. 2 du. I probably should have written this better, but here we have then. Uh, it's an indefinite integral. We don't care about the bounds. And we have um, 1 over u squared. u is squared, right? Root x plus 1 is squared. And then... The, the other part, the 1 over root x dx, is actually um, equal to 2 du. Yeah, I should have should have written this in a better way. But uh, yeah, these uh, color-coded it. Uh, there's so many things I could have done, but I didn't do any of them. Um, and so we have here um, 1 over root x dx is replaced by 2 du. I should have put the 2 next to it, but that's okay. That's your replacement there. Okay, great. And so, how do you integrate 1 over u squared? Please don't get tempted to call it natural log. If it was 1 over u, it'd be natural log. This is 1 over u squared. So what do you do? You make it u to the negative 2 power. Because then you can do the power rule in reverse. So here we go. Power rule in reverse. Add 1 to the x. to divide by the same thing. So add 1 to negative 2. You get negative 1. And instead of dividing by negative 1, here I am multiplying by negative 1. And essentially, you can get rid of the negative exponent 2 and call it negative 2 on top of u. Um, your question came to you in terms of x. Your antiderivative should come back in that same variable in terms of x. So, we have as our final answer then, negative 2 over u, which was root x plus 1, plus a constant. That's your antiderivative there. All right, so those two examples are a bit more difficult than those previous two examples. Um, don't think I can squeeze the next two inside of one video, but we'll see. Um, it could be that we have just uh, uh, two more videos in this lecture series, and then that'll be it. All right. Thank you. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this. Hopefully uh, get you working with these techniques and help you to be able to integrate more functions. Um, this will greatly increase our library of functions that we can integrate if we can master this technique, u substitution. It's a previous topic, a topic that was supposed to be done in the class prior to this. I am making it the first topic in this class so, so we can get on solid footing and then launch off with these other techniques that are much more intricate, much more detailed. Okay? All right. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.